1965, completed his monastic training while serving in various capacities, including working in a camp for refugees who just barely escaped with their lives during the Bangladesh War in 1971. He lived near Belurmat from 1960 on, and thus had the opportunity to come into contact with many monks who were initiated by the Holy Mother, Sri Sharada Devi, Swami Brahmananda, Swami Shivananda, and other direct disciples of Ramakrishna. <clears throat> Swami became the head of the Ramakrishna mission of Shikra in 1988. While there, he initiated literacy and health programs for hundreds of underprivileged villagers and performed relief and rehabilitation work for the homeless. In 1993, Swami Sarvadevananda was posted to the Vedanta Society of Southern California in Hollywood, where he served as assistant minister until 2012, when his predecessor passed away. He became the minister and spiritual leader of the Vedanta Society there. In addition to classes, lectures, and other teachings, he addresses schools, colleges, and religious groups throughout the Southland and also other parts of the United States and internationally. We are privileged to have him here. Please give him a warm welcome. Om Namaste Jati Rajayo Vivekananda Shurai Satchit Sukha Sharupayo Swamine Tapaharine Om Shanti 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 Hi. Our salutation to Swami Vivekananda, who is the king among the renunciates and who is a yogi among the greatest among the yogis and the benefactor of the whole humanity. Om Peace, Peace, Peace be unto us all. First of all, I am very grateful to Dharma Civilization and the USC, particularly our dear Rita and also all of who, who have organized this, this grand celebration. And in this celebration, actually I was feeling that I am taking a dip as if in the Ganges. We take Ganges deep to purify ourselves and when we listen to the inspiring talks about life-changing experiences, that is also purifying our heart and soul. We are listening to the talks and views all from these scholars yesterday referring to Swami Vivekananda and today also so many speakers. My heartfelt love and gratitude to all the speakers and the organizers. Today, we talked about Swami Vivekananda's impact and his philosophy of how he tried to see the science to reach that oneness. We started our discussion here about the topic, that topic of pluralism, exclusivism, inclusivism, inclusivism, etc., from different perspectives. We have thought hard about different philosophies, how Swami Vivekananda connected with that and preached it in his life. But I like to think about that this pluralism, exclusivism, and inclusivism, and from different perspective. We are talking of Swami Vivekananda. He was a human body in flesh, but in spirit, he was divine, he was absolute. I am not talking, I am not a scholar, so please excuse me, I will be speaking from another perspective of it. We see Swami Vivekananda has come down to change the whole trend of thought currents of the world. Swami Vivekananda was 
the Lord who have been incarnated for the good of humanity. And it comes out of the deeper depth of his experience how to transform the whole psyche of the people. We think that we are little. We think that we are insignificant. We think that we have nothing to do as if Vivekananda came here to give us the inspiration. We have everything within us. You have the potential power. Just manifest that power. And that power is indomitable power of the spirit. That human expression, though it is so limited, but it is only a superficial covering inside the truth which is inside. Now we, we thought about Swami Vivekananda in different levels. The meeting of Swami Vivekananda, as we find, and meeting with Sri Ramakrishna. That is the meeting of the East and West. The meditative East, the East which has only experienced the truth, didn't care about the realities and practicalities of life. I cannot say totally true, that is true. They also emphasized on the material development and science also, but intense spiritual, spirituality took Sri Ramakrishna into only God and God and God and forgot about the whole universe. And he was mad and he was intense in that practice. And what he did is a tremendous work is the eye opener for pluralistic thought. He did not mix something of Christianity, something of Hindu, something of Islam, something of this. What he practiced, he took a definite path and be mad in that thought. Forgot about time, space, his health, his family, his friends. He, nothing is there in the world excepting that only one idea which has, he was mad with that, the idea of God realization in the form of Divine Mother. And when he had that, he forgot the other worship. Everything is gone from his mind. And when he had the revelation and he found that infinite light and experience, when he drowned himself as it were in the first vision, and then he lost his outer consciousness and went into that state for that day and the next day, that was his first revelation. And then he wanted to have it constant vision. And Ramakrishna had that vision, constant vision. And did more and more, but crying and weeping. But his simple formula, love for God. And that love for God then transformed into love for humanity. And then he practiced the other disciplines of life. Here is the plurality. When he wanted to say in simple language, oh mother, uh, you are also worshipped in different ways. Please show me how the others also worship you. And in that, he practiced all the 64 systems of Tantra. We couldn't believe the number is so big that how one can practice. And in each path, he followed rigorously, meticulously, under the guidance of a teacher. He's orthodox. You need a teacher. You follow a strict discipline. Be mad in that, and you have the realization. And he practiced Hinduism, he practiced Christianity, Islam, experienced, ultimately experienced the same. What is this pluralistic idea, according to Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, will be this, that it is the experience ultimately is the same. In the journey, there will be different experiences. If I give the example, suppose I come to this Davidson Hall, so if I, someone comes from the east, someone from the west, someone from the north and south, targeting to reach this Davidson Hall, the, the scenario will be different. Experiences on the road will be different. Practices will be different. Rituals will be different. Doctrines, dogmas, that will be different. But the ultimate experience, there is no difference. When we come here, we meet together. And that is the culmination of knowledge. Sri Ramakrishna experienced that. Pluralism, to follow the same path, not that I am traveling in one path and then take an exit and try to go to the other route and then to the other route and then our time and energy is lost. Therefore, the spirituality what Sri Ramakrishna preached is this, that you be deep in your own practice, 
love and respect all other religions, and ultimately you reach the same destination where all harmony and peace and oneness. And that oneness is already there. It is not like reaching a destination. Destination is here itself. We are not recognizing that destination. That's why the question comes, how to recognize? Then came Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda was with the Western mind as reading the Kant, Hegel, and other philosophers, he questioned that this seeing God in the form is unacceptable. How infinite can be finite? So it is ridiculous. And he challenged and challenged and challenged. And when he had the experience with Sri Ramakrishna, and Sri Ramakrishna, he saw this, this mother whom Ramakrishna called it mother, it is no more a statue, a stone image. It is vibrant with light and reality. It is, it is tangible, it is joy, it is bliss radiating. And he forgot whatever he went to go to pray and to gain from that mother, which he denied. And again and again, after that experience, this Vivekananda was challenging, was doubting, was questioning. And then he came to this experience that that mother pervades everywhere. And he sang the song, Ramakrishna taught him the song, that, oh mother, you are everywhere. You are in the earth, you are in this water, or you are in the heaven, you are in the sky, everywhere. He's talking about this, that one consciousness, that Shakti manifested through name and form. But it is the power, that power he's talking about. And Swami Vivekananda got this experience with Ramakrishna's touch. And what the uniqueness of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, it is first experiencing the truth. Vivekananda said, didn't say anything but Ramakrishna. Vivekananda said one day he saw Ramakrishna is walking and crawling towards him and he was seeing, feeling that some energy is coming into him. And he said, lo, that man is entering into me. And Ramakrishna in his childish language said in Bengali, hey, what are you talking in in, in, in a language I don't understand. I will enter into you. It's really Ramakrishna cried at the point of his departure when he was in, in the Dakshin, Kashipur garden house. One day he said, come. And he touched Swami Vivekananda and, and then gave everything to him. And then afterwards he was in tears. Swami Vivekananda said, what has happened? that I have given you what I have earned through all, all my spiritual experiences. I have poured in you all those experiences. I have become a fakir, a beggar. And that is the power. And he said, with this power, you will do tremendous good to the world. And he said, how can I do that? And Ramakrishna Vivekananda later on said, it is that power, that mother, force, which had made me move around the world. He, and he didn't get rest. Ramakrishna said, you will have to do mother's work. You are asking for the nirvikalpa state of samadhi, and you got it. Now the key is with me. When you finish the work of the divine mother, then you will be, it will get back your own experience again. That is, we are talking about that Vivekananda. We have to go to this background. Vivekananda is saturated with this experience of oneness. Vivekananda's all the service activity we talked about, it is not springing from intellectual understanding. It is not from the humanitarian ground. It is not that I, oh, you are a human being, I am compassionate too, I like you, I dislike you, no question. This is the vibrant oneness, what is in me, what is in you, that vibrant oneness, that is the basis of his all activities, all talks, all service, whatever he has done throughout the world. It is his love for humanity. As I said, Swami Vivekananda first was crying for this experience, running after Vive Sri Ramakrishna. And after that, that love turned towards this manifested universe. One day, Swami Vivekananda was walking in the Mayabuti, Almora area. And then one day, he was sitting under a tree in that Almora district, some tree. And in that, suddenly, 
yes, deep meditation. And after that deep meditation, he came into a new experience. And he said, today the mystery, a great mystery has been revealed unto me. And what was that mystery? He said that I felt what is in the microcosm that is in the macrocosm. The micro and macro have merged into one entity. And that is his absolute experience. That which is transcendental reality. That is the immanent reality. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, who gets the benefit by serving others? You think you do some service to others? It is not an intellectual thought. It is an urge of the heart. As we do for ourselves. He says, Swami Vivekananda says, I am serving myself. You serve, it is you are serving yourself. Because this self is there. And that is the basis of his service idea. That is the basis of your Sarvankhalidang Brahma idea. Everywhere permeated that one cosmic Brahman reality. And transcendental reality and immanent reality are not two. The energy which is in the cosmos, in the stars and galaxies, and the energy which is there in the subatomic particle is no difference. It is the one cosmic reality. And that is called prana. Normally, science has come to think about one prana, one energy. But Vedanta has gone one deeper. And Ramakrishna Vivekananda experienced that oneness. It is pranas, prana, chetanas, chetunanam. We are talking about consciousness today. It's a wonderful in talk to understand through this level of development in the uh, brain consciousness or the study of this uh, consciousness studies. But it is wonderful to know that Ramakrishna Vivekananda's consciousness is the consciousness of that oneness behind that brain consciousness. As we are talking about is the matter or the consciousness, what is the primary? And Vivekananda Ramakrishna stands for that one proof of that absolute consciousness. And that consciousness permeates everywhere. As that's why all the idea and also the idea of service idea came. Swami Vivekananda started this Ramakrishna order with this idea to give the education in four different areas, three different major areas. It is service to what? In humanity, not humanity, to every strata of existence. It is not for any particular class, country, creed, or anything, because it is the same oneness everywhere permeating into the reality of the world. So when he's thinking, he's crying for the suffering of humanity. Nobody cried so much for human beings suffering as Ramakrishna Vivekananda cried. Ramakrishna was not a only philosopher. Ramakrishna was not only intoxicated in God. He started this activity of the relief work. Because while he was going in the pilgrimage, he saw the distressed condition, famine-stricken condition of the people. And he said, I cannot move anywhere for going to any pilgrimage. You have to feed them, serve them. And that was the starting point of Ramakrishna movement where we start. That's why we say our karma is not niskama karma. Vivekananda gave us another dimension of the karma idea. It is, it is a what is called practical Vedanta, meaning you are serving God. You are serving the same divine who is in you. It's a good example. We are called the Bhangi Sadhus. Bhangi Sadhus means they are lower category sadhus. They don't know anything of spirituality. That was the name at the beginning when Swamiji's name, some of the monks started doing service to the Sikh people and others. And this round, then, but gradually they understood that philosophy is much higher. It is not as the same as I am offering a flower in the temple or kneeling down before the church as with same reverence to serve someone, to serve the sick, serve the uneducated, serve the people in different level who are mentally, who needs mental nurturing, physical nurturing, emotional nurturing, intellectual nurturing, and in all strata that service he inspired us. So today's what, if a discussion, the time is too short, uh, we, we, we cannot touch even the basic, basic, very, very basic points. 
But it is only to know that premises, if we want to judge Vivekananda, we'll have to think that he is saturated with the consciousness and absolute blissfulness within. Seeing that sameness, his love flow into the external universe. And it is irresistible love. Anyone suffering any corner, he will be restless and crying. And that's why he said, and his mission is a great mission. No one has given such a great mission in life that he said, like Buddha, Bodhisattva idea, Swami Vivekananda said, it's a very powerful statement, you all know. He said, it may be that I shall cast this body off like an old, worn out garment, but I shall not cease to work. I shall inspire men everywhere until that divinity is manifested in each other, until the whole world knows that it's one with God. What a great mission. He is actually inspiring everywhere. As a Ramakrishna order or Vedanta society, we are doing nothing. We are, we are sitting in our own corner and doing something, whatever, in our humble way. But you see how Dharma civilization and all Rita and all of you are enthused and all the scholars who have come in the name of Swami Vivekananda. How, who is inspiring? It is the awakening, the call of the divine that he is resist, irresistibly working to solve the mystery of our life. We have to know who we are. We cannot live just like a secular or simple living in a materialistic life. We have to know that something is more in us. We are divine. We are that truth and in everywhere is that permeated. That is called the ultimate experience of life. Sarvam Kalidang Brahma. And if it is Sarvam Kalidang Brahma, then how can you serve anyone with the little uh, disrespectful way? How can you think of anyone not adoring in a divine level? So that is the, as I was saying, this is the practical Vedanta idea. That idea is that you are serving yourself, the same truth. As you get a wound in your body, you don't show mercy to your wound. You take care of it as equal love and respect as it happens to any part of your body. So this is the cosmic part of me. That idea should be kept and then that service is to be done. It is the same idea. It is a devotional idea. Well, in the Vaishnava literature it is said, wherever you see, it is Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And in the, in the Christian mystics, Christ in the front, Christ in the back, Christ on the right, Christ on the left. Vivekananda experienced that. And he said, it is the service of God. Forget the name, Christ, Chaitanya, Krishna, this, that, Brahman, Atman. These are all only language of the brain. But the truth is the same. So to see that and to serve that, that is the whole of life's principle. So I will humbly uh, place this idea before all the scholars and our friends that really we are blessed to think that in us is the divine. You call it Krishna, you call it Rama, you call it Shiva, you call it Brahman, you call it Atman, you call it Shakti, whatever name. That's, that reality is the reality. And that is the conscious entity behind all our consciousness, all our movement, all our thought. Let us move in our life and take this principle of Swami Vivekananda and serve the whole world with the spirit that it is my worship, work is worship, and that adoration of God in our all action. Thank you all. I think Swamiji took us to a place that is transcognitive. And he placed all of that that we read, hear, see cognitively at a dimension where it is not just mind-to-mind -mind transmission, but heart-to-heart -heart transmission. Thank you so much for that. <laughs>